boys and girls. Welcome back. I want to start a new series on a new radio. Uh, I've had this radio, gosh, probably seven, eight, maybe even ten years. Uh, when I put it in storage, uh, it was it was working. It uh, someone had been working on it prior, and uh, so uh, it was working. Uh, but uh, as you can very well see, there's there's knobs missing, which that's one of the common things in in vintage radios are knobs and screws missing. Uh, I've got a couple of wood screws missing here in the escutcheon. Uh, the grill cloth looks fairly decent, um, and this is a right around a, a 1931 RCA uh, Superette R7. It's an 8-tube uh, Super Heterodyne. Uh, this is probably the most common right around this era. This was, uh, if you'll remember, this was right around the Depression, and they were trying to make them smaller, compact, and lower cost. However, this one cost, I believe it was listed for fifty-seven fifty uh, without the tubes. So, I don't know how much the tubes cost, but uh, that was um, that was uh, the cost of it at that day. Uh, the Superette, that came from the term Super Heterodyne, and uh, uh, RCA along this time also produced the uh, R9 in a console, which it, it's the same chassis as this R7. Now, the R7A uses a different output tube, so it's a variation of this, but they've made several different styles of cabinets, and, and, and all the pictures and, and everything that I've seen this is right around 1931 now uh, radio museum listed as a 32 1932 or something like that but uh, it's right around the 31 32 time frame uh, so uh, let's uh, let me uh, pause this a second flip this thing around and we'll go through the, the rear end and do an assessment. The cabinet is in is in pretty good shape. Uh, it's going to need uh, some finish. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have to strip the whole thing. We'll just see as, uh, as we go along to see if I uh, might be able to uh, uh, just strip the, uh, the lacquers off of it and, and go from there. Uh, but it it's, the cabinet is really, really decent shape. There's a couple of places on the back that's going to need um, gluing, but I think that has to do with the heat. So let's flip this around and take a, a better look at it inside and see what we've got to do. As you can see, one of the first things that I had to address was this asbestos pad on the side. Now this pad, I've already addressed it before. I'm going to do any work whatsoever on this. And uh, here's the clip of what I did to it. And uh, a little bit of uh, my thought process that went into it. This is the area of concern. Uh, it's got an asbestos pad stapled to the side of this radio. Here are the uh, output tubes. 45s in this radio <clears throat> and since this was in close proximity you can actually see that the radio cabinet was cut out uh, to allow room and heat dissipation so they put asbestos here on this pad uh, asbestos uh, is any of the matter there's like six different uh, types of asbestos that's mined it's a mineral six different minerals that's mined and it's heat resistance fire resistance uh, non-conductive uh, and it, it it became uh, widely used during world war ii and i think it's uh, the reason is obvious that during world war ii the uh, uh, 
the war effort and, and all. <clears throat> um, everybody here is mesothelioma, and uh, it's not the, really that common of a disease, but it, it does happen, and they believe it's caused by asbestos exposure. The biggest uh, concern is uh, uh, asbestosis. Uh, anytime you breathe these fibers for any length of time, uh, it just uh, they get stuck uh, into the embed in the uh, uh, lungs uh, and uh, causes irritation. And of course, the body rejects it, and it's just uh, and it causes constant scarring tissue. And um, over a period of time, it can develop into cancers. But it, you know, it, it's breathing issues and and things like that. And there's a lot of factors in, involved. Whether you smoke um, increases, uh, you know, your the symptoms. It, uh, I mean, and uh, uh, or the conditions of your lungs. Um, you know, how long you're exposed to it. Uh, and things like that. I uh, knew, a, knew a man, lived to be a hundred, hundred years old, a little over a hundred years old, that worked in as, the asbestos field, uh, where he dealt with asbestos. And uh, he was mowing his lawn, or his daughter's lawn, when he was 99 up to a hundred. He, he was still mowing, very active, had no ill effects from it at all. <clears throat> However, his wife died when she was 40 from washing his clothes. So, uh, it, it, you know, there, there's more and more known about it than it was when it first started. You know, the brake pads were asbestos. Every, you know, there's a lot of things. A lot of insulation in schools <laughs> and houses were asbestos at that time. Asbestos can be rendered harmless in uh, uh, most cases, if it, it becomes dangerous when it's in a condition called fi friable, and that's when it is um, small particles can be suspended in the air and breathed in and ingested also. And as you can see, the edge of this one is starting to to fray. And uh, talk to several folks in the uh, and what they would do and th the consensus is we just need to encapsulate this I mean I can take it out but what do I replace it with uh, you know uh, it's been here for this is 1931 model so it's been there 80 some odd years almost 90 years so uh, what I uh, talked about encapsulating it uh, with, you can encapsulate with glue Elmer's glue uh, I talked about, uh, and, and a suggestion came in to do it with lacquer, and I, all those would work from that standpoint as far as encapsulation. That's all we're going to do is encapsulate it, keep it from becoming airborne, uh, and try not to change the looks of it, okay? Uh, my biggest concern was the flash point of dried lacquer or glue or anything like that because they, apparently they, these tubes do get hot They're, if you've dealt with any output tubes they generally run kind of hot and so I don't want uh, this to flash into flames because I'm trying to protect this uh, uh, you know encapsulate this uh, asbestos so I went out and got some clear engine enamel and I'm gonna spray uh, and encapsulate it with clear engine enamel that will withstand up to 500 degrees. Mask it off to keep some of the overspray down. And I'm going to shoot it with this uh, engine gloss enamel. Gloss clear with some ceramic. So I'm going to shoot that and uh, uh, just encapsulate the uh, fibers of the asbestos to uh, prevent it from going airborne. Sprayed several coats on there and uh, uh, it's very absorbent. It absorbed a lot of the, uh, the uh, enamel but 
As you can see, maybe you can see that the edges are no longer frayed. It's been encapsulated, and that's the whole that's the whole idea behind doing this. Now I think we can uh, safely work on this without any risk. Okay, as you can see in here, perhaps. Uh, there's the power transformer. Let me get a pointer. The power transformer. I'm going to have to clean it up a little bit. Um, since this was working at one point in time, I believe that it, uh, it uh, is still good. I checked the primary with a ohm meter. And we'll go through all the checks a little later when we pull this out of the cabinet. And we'll go. And uh, we'll see, and we'll do, and we'll document it. Uh, the, the schematic seems to have quite a bit of uh, good documentation on it, uh, but uh, we'll we'll document what uh, what we find. This is the 80 rectifier tube, uh, and uh, these are the two output tubes. Uh, they're 45s. Now the R7A used 47 tubes, so these are 45, so I'm confident this is an R7. And right here is the cabinet that's separating. I have, I believe it's due from the heat from this, from this tube. And then the cabinet up here also is separating. So uh, it's real good shape, just going to have to do a little uh, gluing. All right. Um, the, if you look, these are the filter caps. Why do I have a pointer if I'm not going to use it? The filter caps. These are called Mershon um, wet capacitors. And they are, the, the capacitors themselves, what I understand, are a collector item within themselves. Uh, I can see that this one right here may have been... Um, opened at one point in time. These caps come off. So um, we'll see as when we get into it if we want to restuff these or not. But since these are uh, kind of a, a collector item themselves, we may very well want to uh, go ahead and uh, uh, recap that or restuff those. If not, we can do it on the bottom. I believe we'll have plenty of room. Okay, uh, you've got your antenna coil down in the front, just under the uh, speaker. And that's a that's a a nice coil on that speaker. And uh, as I can tell, there's some cracks in the corners, all four corners of this speaker. So I don't know if that's just an age thing or. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any holes, just some cracks. So it, somebody might have been jamming too much during the depression. I don't know. We'll see when we get into it a little bit better. But the antenna coil and the way that uh, the circuit works, uh, the the uh, comes from the antenna coil to a 35 tube here, which is the uh, the RF amp coming off the antenna and it amplifies the signal of course then it goes to the 27 tube here which is the uh, oscillator de first detector tube then it goes uh, I'm sorry that's just the oscillator tube that's just the oscillator tube the 24 is the detector right there and uh, so then from there it goes to the first IF. And if you look, these are not IF cans. There are no IF cans. Hmm, so where are they? They're under the chassis through these holes. And we'll see them when we pull this thing out. But they're like uh, copper cans with screw on tops. So we'll, we'll look at that. It's kind of an unusual bird, but the IF cans are under here. Now, what's interesting about the IF, it is a 175 KC is the IF frequency. 
Uh, we talked about these cans a little bit. This can right here or the audio uh, transformer. The input and the output transformers are all in this can right here. Um, since this has worked, I believe, and we'll we'll own these out, and we'll also do some uh, uh, inductance checking also when we get it pulled apart for documentation purposes. And uh, but self-contained. Now this is the RF bypass capacitor can. Now this is going to be the interesting thing. There's like six or eight capacitors inside here that this is stuffed with tar. Now, once we get in here, we're going to have to decide whether we're going to pull this out and pull the tar out. And what I've seen in other restorations is to take this, melt the tar somewhat, pull it out, put another like perf board or something in there with uh, all the capacitors and reroute it. Uh, but most of the capacitors in this uh, radio is right here. The tuning capacitor is also underneath the, uh, the chassis. If you can see how thick this thing is. Okay. So we'll get this thing pulled out in the first, in the, I guess, second part. But uh, that that's going to probably be a, uh, a booger and probably something to really uh, kind of uh, a nasty nasty part and a lot of people don't like to deal with that stuff and I've, I've done it in the Atwater Kent and it's not not a whole lot of fun but anyway we've got our IFs we we'll go back to our IFs uh, you got your first IF and then uh, you go to your 35 tube, which is uh, this one, this other 35, which is IF amplifier. And then you go to your uh, 27 tube here, which is your um, second detector. And then from there, uh, you go to your input transformer. And uh, then you go to your push pulls here. And then it goes to your output transformer to your speaker. So, um, tell you what, let me spin this thing around. And, uh, oh, so the assessment. Uh, the other thing, this is, this is almost a showstopper. If you'll see right here, this, this chassis sat in a, uh, there's four rubber grommet not really grommets they're just long rubber with grooves in it that 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 it sets on however in this slot here and over here are metal brackets i was able to go on ebay today and find two of them and got them they're they're shipped they should be here by the end of the week I, that that was one of my lucky days. One of my lucky days right there. Uh, I've got the rubber uh, suspension uh, grommets. Uh, that, that, grommets not really a good word. They're just cushion pads that this sits on. I've got those ordered. The dial itself is a frick. It's got a rubber friction disc that, as you turn the knob, the uh, the dial turns the uh, the variable condenser and so I've got that ordered also I found some more knobs on eBay those are ordered and they're on their way and I got those from bag her a cat same people I got the speaker from uh, on the Philco so but uh, let's uh, I'll tell you what let's do let's go ahead and Let's fire this up. Now this is rated at 95 watts. And so let's fire it up. And I'm going to tell you, I've already fired it up. But I want to, I want you to see what uh, what this thing does. And one of these output tubes is bad. This one right here is bad. It's totally bad. But uh, push-pull situation, it'll work with one tube. So I can take that out and it works fine. It works the same. Uh, I did find eight tubes with a 45 involved 
in the thing in the uh, in the set, and, and I was able to make an offer on it and got it uh, for uh, twenty bucks. And they, these things are expensive, so I've got uh, uh, 20 bucks for one, two, one, 145 tube, an 80 tube, uh, four 24 A's, and uh, two 27s. So, or no, one 27. So, uh, I think I came out pretty good on that, and the, they're guaranteed to be good. So, uh, hopefully, they will be. So, let's flip this around, and we'll fire it up and I'll let you listen to it just as it is. Don't so, sound too bad, does it, guys? Another uh, thing I failed to mention, probably going to have to replace that tuner dial, which is just a 0 to 100 uh, uh, piece of paper, pretty much, what, what this one is, this cardboard. But that's about it, guys. That's the assessment. That's the history of this. Uh, and... Uh, uh, the next series, we're going to start tearing it down and start uh, doing some rebuild on some of the uh, components and uh, uh, the wires. Uh, the wires are in pretty rough shape, so there's probably going to be a whole lot of under the, the uh, chassis uh, rewiring going on also. So that's it for now. I appreciate all my subscribers. The new ones I've gotten in the past week, I appreciate all my comments. Uh, that, that's uh, that's how we learn and getting feedback, and so just keep the the feedback coming, and, and we'll try to do better in what we do and have fun doing it. So this is Larry from the uh, Hills of Tennessee. Thanks for watching.